What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Jay Campbell. And I'm Hunter Williams. And we are back doing another video here today on a topic that's near and dear to our hearts uh, because we get so many questions from younger people about this. Let me just read this question that came out on my Instagram the other day. And uh, shout outs to this person. I uh, won't well, use his real name, but uh, to protect protect the innocent. I'll get to protect the innocent. I will give you his uh, initials. It's AF. He says, hello. What kind of peptides do you suggest for a lean bulk that will get me bigger, but also leaner? I know the nutrition and training, but I'm taking some time off from PEDs for some time. And I wanted to see I'm new to peptides and training to do a show for next year. I appreciate your suggestions. Okay. So uh, this is a great question because, I mean, it's a stupid question, but it's a great question because people are so utterly clueless out there from so many scam artists on the internet, you know, online gurus and biohackers and again, quote unquote, fitness uh, trainers and you know, people who come off as trying to be subject matter experts. But this is like something that I've been addressing probably for 20 years. And again, look, Hunter learns from other people and me and I learn from other people. We're always just stepping on the shoulders of smarter, you know, let's just call it giants, but smarter people than us. So it's like, you know, you're going to learn this if you listen to us, just as we learned it from somebody else. But again, always make sure that you're getting your information from people that are experts in the field and trusted sources and have actual credibility. And again, so many people online today do not. And I do life experience as well. Yeah, I was just going to say younger people seem to trust what they hear on the internet from people that don't have the life experience and don't actually have the walk the walk, talk to talk type stuff as a background. You know, you're, I mean, it's real simple, right? Like, are you going to work with a life coach who's 22 years old? Right? Like probably not. But again, it, it, it's up to you. Do you have discernment? Can you actually ask the right questions and critically think? But regarded to that question, there is no such thing as gaining muscle and losing body fat at the same time. Just as there is no such thing as getting ripped and gaining muscle, right? You're choosing one or the other. And this is always going to be related to your caloric intake or your caloric deficit, right? So if you are choosing to build muscle, you're going to gain fat. I don't care what your genetics are, what drugs you're using, what growth hormone agents or peptide agents you're using, what supplements you're taking, how you're training, how much cardio you're doing. This is a literally law of thermodynamics. It's energy balance. It's energy in, energy out. If you want to gain muscle, you're going to have to eat more calories than you need at maintenance to maintain your current body composition slash weight, right? So it's like you're not going to use a magic peptide or anabolic steroid or combination of both and train in a specific way where that you're actually going to lose body fat and build muscle at the same time. Now, I will say if you're a brand new trainee a newbie to this you're and, and you are also a mutant genetically you're one of those like you know mesomorphic body built pro bodybuilder types that literally can like look at weights and build muscle then yeah maybe when you first start both drugs training and whatnot you might actually build a little bit muscle and start showing your abs a little more you're not really getting leaner you're still building muscle but you might have the genetics to show abs so you in your mind think you're leaner but by and large 98 percent of people cannot lose body fat at the same time they're building muscle. Now there are hacks, you know, our program 30 days to shreds, which we talk about uh, in all of our videos. When we talk about fat loss and fasting, we kind of explain little angles and, uh, and tactics that you can use to truly probably gain three or four pounds while you're getting leaner, but you're never going to build muscle. So if you're a younger guy, right, you're 20 to 25 and you've been in the bodybuilding slash lifting game for three to four years. And you want to put on size, right? Like you put on six pounds since you started lifting, but you want to gain 20. You're not going to lose body fat in putting on 20 pounds of muscle. You got to eat to put on the muscle. And when you eat at the level necessary to build muscle, you're going to put on body fat. Again, it's the laws of thermodynamics. If you're going to eat 20 times your body weight in calories, right, per pound, you're going to gain a little bit of body fat. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So when I hear questions like this, what it really tells me is that person is probably fatter than they need to be, but they want to put on muscle at the same time. Now to that point, I would say in order to put on muscle, most likely you need to lose the body fat first. So this guy is probably saying this because he's fatter than he wants to be, but he also wants to put on muscle at the same time. And this is probably dude, honestly, a manifestation of the skinny fat phenomenon sure, sure. because of the hormonal deficiencies yeah. and like the lifestyle uh, changes that men have gone through in the last few years, women too, but we have this like skinny fat phenomenon where guys 
are skinny, but they're fat and they're inflamed. Yeah. And they think that putting on muscle, they want to put on muscle because they're skinny fat, but they think if they put like, if they're going to eat in a caloric surplus, they're going to get fatter than they already are. The problem is they need to lose all of the body fat and get rid of the inflammation in the first place. The old bodybuilding saying that's actually very true is the leaner you start a bulk, the leaner you're going to stay in a bulk. And what that means is in order to put on muscle, you need to get leaner first, which you can do through resistance training and cardio. But for someone that's like 18% body fat as a man, and if you say, hey, I want a lean bulk, no, you need to get your butt to like 10% body fat first and then be in a state where you're, okay, now I can start to put on muscle instead of trying to put on muscle at 18% body fat because you're really too high of a body fat percentage to do so. So to that point, you're right. The whole thing about you know calories in, calories out, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but at the same time, it's also that we want to get the body to a lean state before we start putting on weight. So a lot of guys are like, oh, you know, I've got like a little bit of a midsection, but I want to, I want to bulk up because my arms are too small and you know, like my legs are too small, whatever. And it's like, no, you need to get all of the fat off of you first, and then you can go into a state. And when you do that, you enhance your insulin sensitivity so that the food that you're eating now, you're going to have a higher metabolism because your body's absorbing it and using it to turn into muscle yeah. much more efficiently than you would at 18% body fat. So the real question is, is this person probably too fat? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know him specifically, yeah. but a lot of people that are asking that question in the head is that they know they're a little too fat to begin with and they want to put on muscle. And to that, I would say, get your butt very lean first yeah. and then you can, you know, that's put it, muscle. you nailed yeah. it. I mean, look, if you're fat and again, how do we know anything? You don't know anything. Get a bod pod done. If you yep. can't get a bod pod done, get an in-body done or a uh, DEXA scan or a SECO scan. I mean, all three of in-body DEXA and SECO are not as effective. You're going to get a five to seven percent error margin rate because, again, you know, through bioimpedance, uh, you know, you're, they're, they're measuring like the level of um, fluid in your body, you know, how dehydrated you are and stuff like that. So, again, it's an error margin is really high, five to seven percent. Bod pod is less than one percent, you know, it can be two percent depending on how fat you are. But he's totally right. If you think you want to lean out and build muscle at the same time, you're fat. You should shred, you know. Tom Zakharoff, our, one of our copywriters, has literally just lowered his body fat to like four or five percent. He's completely natural. You know, he's done everything that you could possibly do correctly, but naturally, which is obviously a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but it's 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 it ultimately is a negative thing because you're going to shut down a lot of like things in your body that you wouldn't shut down if hormonally. You were using, yeah, yeah. If you were using therapeutic testosterone and peptides or growth hormone and a bunch of other supplements, but he's in Canada, he doesn't have access to a lot of this stuff. Uh, and so he did everything naturally, but he did it right and he got shredded. So props to him. He looks amazing. He's absolutely shredded, but now he's got issues because he's dropped everything so low without, you know, having the advantages that we, him and I have, or other people like us have, which again is therapeutic testosterone, peptides, growth hormone, supplements that, you know, will prevent cata uh, catabolic conditions from setting in. But the bottom line is, is get ripped, use our diet, 30 days to shreds, lower your body fat into the single digits, get as lean as you possibly can, and then concern yourself. With building muscle because it's a lot easier to build muscle when you don't have any fat versus when you're fat trying to build muscle is meaningless almost because you're not going to see it right like you don't yeah, you don't have the, the metabolism foods. either yeah. to be able to process the carbs that you need i'll say something too because I, I didn't we didn't really mention this women ask this question all the time yeah and it's a lot of times i wouldn't say they're skinny fat they're like, oh, I want like more muscle in my butt or I want like more muscle, you know, like more tone in my arms. Train hard. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Train to failure. But a lot of they're like, I want to build muscle, but I don't. And a lot of time too, I will say this is like skinnier women that say this. So like I want to build muscle, but they're so scared of putting on fat. I think a lot of times mentally we have to kind of detach to know that like, okay, I'm going to put on, you know, maybe two or 3% body fat in this phase of building muscle and that's okay. Right. I'm not going to be photo shoot ready right. when I'm going through a muscle muscle building phase. But when I put on that extra muscle, now my metabolism is going to be higher. When I lean out, I'm going to be bigger and my muscle is going to look a lot better when I lean out and my metabolism, you know, for the long run is going to be better. That's a good point. So, so your rule of thumb on how much body fat you should put on before you start getting leaner to add muscle is five to 7%. And I would say seven to ten percent for women, because again, a thinner, skinnier uh, woman is not going to show as much body fat as a similar thinner, skinnier man if they gain seven to ten percent body fat. Because yep. again, you're going to gain it as a man around your belly, yep. which is going to be psychologically depressing, and you don't want that, right? Because again, you're always going to be prone to, to store 
<clears throat> unwanted body fat in the areas that have the lowest amount of blood flow, which for dudes is belly button, low back and hips. For women is always like the glute ham tie-in region. That's why they get dimples, quote unquote, cottage cheese dimples and cellulite in those areas. So bottom line is if you are wondering whether or not you can get lean or uh, at the same time, build muscle, that means you're too fat, <clears throat> get your body fat into single digit percentages. If you are already now ripped and it's time to build muscle, then, and again, you're, you know, whether you're uh, natural or you're using therapeutic testosterone or uh, peptide growth hormone agents, uh, your rule of thumb is do not go beyond adding five to 7% body fat. If you've done that and you've trained correctly and you've eaten the right, right amount of calories, um, you will add muscle. And then when you trim down uh, the next time, meaning you shred down, you, hopefully you're using a 30 days of shreds program or similar, then you will have a net positive gain of muscle. But that's always the rule of thumb. Get as lean as possible and then attempt to build muscle. Stop playing games with your mind that you think that you can gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. That usually just, as you said earlier in the very beginning of this call, that means you're too fat. Yeah, exactly. All right. I'm Jay Campbell. I'm Hunter Williams. We will see you guys very soon. Peace.